right, all right, all right. Uh, first and foremost, we want to say thank you all for letting us, allowing us to be here. Uh, we are Israel United in Christ. Speaking right now is uh, Captain Taza Juan, and then to my right. Officer C. And uh, basically what we're here to do is just bring out truth in the scriptures, in the Bible, all right? Um, basically, when you read in the scriptures, it's a foretelling of a history book of a, uh, of a great people, the Israelites. We just so happen to be the Israelites. We are the Israelites. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, we make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So here in these last days, we're here to, the Lord said that he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh upon the planet of our earth. And that's what we're doing in a nutshell. We have a school right here locally at... Uh, uh, 5380 uh, Silver Star Road and we teach out of the Bible truth alright so once again we're just gonna begin and get into the lesson today we're gonna talk about who we are as a people and the definition of salvation and we're gonna touch a little bit as well on voting as a people alright that's what we'll get into it real quick go ahead brother come on alright let's get started let's go to the book of John chapter 8 and verse 32 for our viewers out there that have never heard before uh, what we teach is that we are the Israelites according to the Bible right so the first thing we're going to prove is that according to the Bible the so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans are the Israelites and that the individuals in the Bible are indeed black people that's right, right let's start there that's right. John chapter 8 the book of John chapter 8 verse 32 mm -hmm. and he shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So the Bible says very plain and simple. It says that ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So Christ is letting us know that what we've been taught in this world is lies. Right. Because we must be taught the truth. One of the most important lies and the biggest lie and the most influential lie that has been taught to us as a people is that Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is Caucasian. Right. Now, a lot of times when you hear this, our people are upset about it. They are upset. Like today, uh, we were out doing a fundraiser at our church. We raised funds so we can help the body. And uh, we talked to individuals. And when we say something about the color of Christ, there's two responses that you will most commonly receive. One is that the color of Christ doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And two is that he's white. Right. Now, what you'll find out when you read the Bible is that both of those statements are false. One the color of Christ does matter because it's documented in the Bible. Yes. Second, if Jesus is love, we need to know who does he love. And we're going to touch that on the second part. And I want to add a third on there as well. If Jesus Christ's color did not matter, then why throughout the whole world in 2018, about to be 19, is he depicted as a Caucasian man? Mm. Once again, the brother stated, this has nothing to do with being racist right. or picking one side, being biased of the other. We are simply going with Bible truth and historical falsehood and lies. We are bringing out the truth according to the Bible. So we all must go by that here today. Go ahead, bro. All right, let's read that. Let's read that. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Let's start at 1. I'm sorry. Because I, I, we have viewers that may not understand the Bible or ever heard this before. Let's start at verse 1. The book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh-huh. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him uh -huh. to show to what? To show. To what? To show uh -huh. unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Jump down to verse 2. Verse 2. Who bear record of the word of God. Uh-huh. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Of the what? And the testimony of Jesus Christ. Read. And of all things that he saw. The things that he envisioned. Mm. And of all things that he saw. The things that John the Revelator saw. Now we're going to get the, 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 the description mm. of Jesus the Christ. What he saw with his own two eyes. Bring it out. Alright, let's jump down to verse 14. The book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So now we get the texture of the hair of Jesus Christ. And this is the first thing that shows you that the image that is portrayed throughout the whole world is a lie. There's not one image of Caesar Borgia being showed with white woolly hair. Mm -hmm. He always has blonde straight hair. Why is that? Because it's not true. Read. Okay. Go I just want to say something on that because he said uh, Caesar Borgia. For a lot of the viewers listening right now, you might not know who Caesar Borgia is. But when you go into history, you read about Pope Alexander VI of Rome, okay? At this time period, you got to understand that Christianity, the history of the Israelites and our, our heritage was being mixed and mingled in with idolatry. And one of the things that this Pope did in particular was he took his son, 
who was Caesar Borgia. You read about him um, in, in uh, probably in your history class. They have a show about him. It's called The Borgias. Uh, he took his son and gave him the life of the black man, the true Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Okay? So he was the man depicted or he was the image that was put up as the Jesus that you know by today as being a white man with, uh, with, uh, with blonde hair and blue eyes. Okay? So that's who he is. Ah, so read that. Verse 14. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Read. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Why? Because he drunk wine. Read. In verse 15. And his feet uh -huh. like unto fine brass. And his feet was like unto fine brass. Talking about the color of Jesus Christ's feet. Read. And as if. As they, if what? As if they burnt in a furnace. So, the first description, it says that his feet was like unto the color of fine brass. Now, we know that brass is brown. Similar to a penny, or if anybody has played instruments, you have brass instruments. A trumpet is brown. But the key part is that it's as if it what? As if they burnt in a furnace. As if it burned in a furnace. What does that mean? Jesus Christ was a black man with black skin and white woolly hair. Now that we understand, okay, Jesus is black. Okay, I, I can dig that. But maybe he was an albino. Maybe everybody else in the Bible, I mean, maybe he was. everybody else was white and he just came out black, black yeah, all right. of a sudden. Let's see if that's true. Let's go to the most high God of Israel. Let's see what color he was. What did he look like? Let's go to the book of Daniel. Chapter 7 and verse 9. Let's get the understanding of what the father looked like. So what you're going to find out, what we're going to find out and reveal unto you all what you're going to find out as you're learning. You should all, you should all right now be taking little side notes because we're giving out biblical truth, biblical facts, okay? The Bible says prove all things. Now a lot of people like to see and think that what we're speaking of is we're twisting the scriptures or it's against the Bible. But we're using the Bible and explaining to you what you have not been educated on. For lack of better words, you have not been no, you have not been taught that Christ is a black man. Right. God is black. Right. The disciples are black. The mother Mary, she was a black. The people of the Bible, when you read from Genesis on to Revelation, this is true black history. Right. You don't have to wait until February to know your history. Right. It's been here and it's been in the King James Version Bible for, for many a years. Color does matter. Does save God. That's right. Yeah, brother. That's right. All right, read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. Uh -huh. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Read. And the ancient of days. The what? The ancient of days. The ancient of days. The man with no beginning and no end, the most high God. Read. Did sit. Uh huh. He, hold on. He what? Did sit. What is that showing you? That he had a body. The Most High God has a body, and he is a man. When you read Exodus 15 and 3, it says he's a man of war. So if you have a doctrine that you believe God is a woman, that's not true as well. <laughs> Bring read. It yep. Whose garment was white as snow, uh -huh. and the hair of his head... This is the key. The what? The hair of his head... What? Like the pure wool. The hair of his head was like the pure wool. Just like who? His son that we just read about in the book of Revelation. They both have white woolly hair. Who on the face of the earth has woolly hair? Mm. Texture. The so-called blacks. The so-called Hispanics before they were assimilated and, and conquered by the so-called white man for over 400 years. Mm. We all had woolly hair. Alright? Now, John 14 and 9. John chapter 14 and verse 9. And, and then we're going to get off of color and we're going to go into the curses that show you without a doubt that you so-called blacks Hispanics and Native Americans are the children of Israel. Read that. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 9. Uh huh. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Uh huh. He that have seen me. He that have what? He that have seen me. He that have what? He that have seen me. We just seen what John wrote. John said that he was a black man with brass. <laughs> with skin that was brass and it said burn in a furnace. He was a dark skinned black man. Read it again. He that have seen me, M my blackness, read, have seen the Father. Read. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? You see that? Jesus said, made it very simple. He said, if you saw me, then you seen my Father. What is he letting us know? That the man upstairs is a black man. 
and his people that he chose to be chosen above all other nations are black. I'll prove it to you. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Let's see what color is the nation of the Jews or the nation of Israel. Let's find out according to the Bible what color are they. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Uh huh. Judah morning. Who? Judah morning. Judah Judah Mourneth. Everybody says they're from the line of Judah, from the tribe of Judah. Judah Mourneth, read. And the gates thereof language. Uh huh. They are black. They are what? They are black. They are what? They are black. The Jews are black. Read. Unto the ground. Uh huh. And the cry of Jerusalem is going up. So, we can do this all day, but we're not going to spend all this time showing you something that's common sense. All right, it's 2018. Look at the scriptures that we just gave you. Examine them and prove them wrong. You can't. The Jews are black, Jesus is black, and the Most High God is black. So now let's go into nationality. We want to deal with the nationality of who we are as a people. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. And let's get the understanding of how did we come to the conclusion that African Americans, that Jamaicans, that Hispanics, are Israelites. What makes us so bold in our speak to say that we belong to the chosen seed upon the face of the earth? The Bible. Read it. The book of the Isaiah, chapter 1, knoweth his owner. Read. And the ass, his master's crib. So the Most High God is comparing us to two animals. He says the ox knoweth his owner and the ass, his master's crib. These are two animals. Dumb animals on the face of the earth. But God says, through Isaiah, that these individuals know who their founder is. They know who their creator is. They know their power source, who feeds them, who protects them. But the children of Israel do not know. When you ask a black, a so-called black man, what's your nationality? What do you get? I'm a Christian. I am a Methodist. I'm a uh, Rastafarian. You get his religion. You will not get his nationality. Why will you not get his nationality? Because they do not know what it is. They only know what they have been told to them while they have been enslaved. Read. The ox knoweth his owner. Uh huh. And the ass his master's crib. Read. But Israel. But who? But Israel. Read. Doeth not know. Israelites do not know who they are. That is why we are teaching this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth because it was prophesied that we would not know who we are. That is why we have different names in every different island that we were dropped off on throughout the transatlantic slave trade. If you go to the land of Haiti, how are you now Haitian? Right. When you go to the land of uh, Jamaica, now they're Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. How are you named after a landmass that you were taken to? Obviously, that is not your origin. african American. We were brought here to America. How can we be Americans? And when you read in the Bible, we're going to get to it today. We were ran into Africa in 70 AD, and we were brought here on slave ships in 1492. I mean 1619. So those two labels of African Americans do not to, do not apply to us as well. So who are we? You want to add to that? Yeah, I was want to add to that because uh, what he's going to, to explain is that landmass does not dictate your nationality. You when we say nationality, we're talking about you descend from a certain lineage, lineage like us. We're, we we know where Israel. We also know that there's a landmass called Israel, but the land the, the the land of Israel was named after a man. It was our, our father. It was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For an example, to be an American, you that's not a nationality. That's a that's a title. That's a name. We don't all descend from America Vespucci. Okay. When you look up who that is, that was an, uh, an Italian, he was an Italian explorer, okay, he was a navigator. And he found this, he, he, he claimed this area over here as his own, for lack of better words. They put the credit of what Christopher Columbus discovered in America, and they put his name on this place, on this landmass that they said they so-called discovered, with people that were here already. But when you go into the scriptures, you'll find out that the nationality is dictated off who the uh, Israelites are, who are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. All right? That's good. You know. All praises. So let's go, let's go down to uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 9 and verse 7. Because I want to hit home that we do not know who we are. And then I'm going to show you who we are according to the Bible. And I want you to prove it wrong. I want you to show me through your scriptures and through your historical facts that you are Jamaican. That you are Haitian. Right. That you are an African-American. I want you to prove that out of the Bible. Read. Uh, so. Yep. 
the book of Daniel, chapter 9 and verse 7. Uh -huh. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee. Righteousness belongeth unto us. That is something that is within us. That is why the so-called black man, we are the most wannabe spiritual men on the face of the earth. Because we want to get back to that nature of being on one accord with the Most High God. Because that's what's in our heart. That's what's in our soul. But we have been taught lies and now we have been disconnected from our Father. Read. But unto uh, us, confusion of faces. But unto the black man is confusion of faces. We do not know who we are. We are the only people on the face of the earth that put another man's texture of hair in his head. A woman walk around with blonde, straight hair and nobody has a problem with it. How is it? That is an outward sickness. Why does not every single nation on the face of the earth put black woolly hair in their head? And when they do do it, uh, the other nations will look at them crazy. You'll never see a Chinese man with an afro on a normal day. You won't see that. And if you do, guess what? Halloween, trick or treat, they won't go to an interview with your hair on their head. They won't go to a marriage with your hair on their head. But our people will. Why? Because we have confusion of faces. Read. As, as at this day. Read. To the men of Judah and to the inhabitant of Jerusalem. Read. And unto all Israel. And unto all Israel. We are all confused as a people. Jeremiah 17 and 4. So what we're going to keep hitting on is that us as a people, we have been destroyed and we have a lack of self of who we are. And because of that, we have learned to hate ourselves. Kanye West said it best. He said, they make us hate ourselves. Ah, I can't even remember the lyrics. They love their wealth. They love their wealth. That is what we have done. We have assimilated to their culture. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. Uh -huh. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage. So God says that the children of Israel were going to discontinue from their heritage. That means they were not going to know who they were. So forget your black uh, history month. Forget your Latin Hispanic heritage month. That is not right. Because God says your true heritage was going to be taken from you. And that is what we are witnessing today. Because every year when we go to Black History Month, what do they start at? They start in 1619. Who do they teach you? Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, uh, Angela Davis, Marcus so on and so Garvey. forth. Who? Marcus, Marcus Garvey. Garvey. Well, that's not history. The white man, when he talks about history, yeah. he does not go to 1600s, right. 1700s. His history goes way back. He talks about Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. He talks about uh, um, all these the individuals seasons. in Europe and so on and so forth and back. Why is it that our history starts 400 years back? How is that? All right. Read it again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. Uh-huh. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage Read. that I gave thee. Uh-huh. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. This is key. This is key. He said we were going to be discontinued from our heritage. And he was going to cause us to serve our enemies in a land which thou knowest not. Now you ask yourself. What group of people upon the face of the earth are in a land that they are not um, um, indigenous to? Is it the Chinese man? No. Is it the Russian man? No. Is it the Arab man? No. Is it the African man? No. But who on the face of the earth has been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth and remain there to this day worshiping other gods that do not belong to them and that do not look like them? It's us. It's you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth during the transatlantic slave trade, during the sub-Saharan slave trade. It's you. You are the greatest people on the face of the earth, and you have been disconnected from your heritage. And we're trying to bring you back to your true nationality. Give me uh, um, Sirach 17 and 17. i got to show them what exactly is the heritage that God gave us. What is the heritage that we were disconnected to? Because a lot of black people might say, well, I still know how to dance. I still know how to sing. I still know Negro spirituals. That's not a heritage according to God. 17 and 17. 11, 11, yeah. This is the book of Sirach Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an inheritance. And the what? The law of life for inheritance. The laws of God for inheritance. 
Now, when you look at the black community today, we are a lawless people. That is why we lead the nation and the world in homosexuality. We lead the nation and the world in, in low marriage rates, in STDs, in crime, in murder, in, 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 in drug dealing, so on and so forth. All these evil things, we are at the forefront of these things. Why? Because we have been disconnected from our heritage. Read that again. What is the heritage that he gave us? Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for inheritance. He gave us the laws of God for inheritance, but we were disconnected from that. Now we are in the midst of all manners of evil, and the prophets are coming back in the last days to bring you back to who you are according to the Bible. All right? Job 8 and 8, Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> I'm only going into three scriptures in Deuteronomy 28, oh, oh, so yeah. stay ready. Stay ready. Then the captain's coming with salvation. Y'all going y'all gonna to get a real eye awakening when we find out that Jesus Christ did not come for everybody. No. Read that. The book of Job, chapter 8 and verse 8. Uh-huh. For inquire, I pray thee, uh -huh. of the former age, uh -huh. and prepare thyself to the search of thy father. To the what? For the search of their fathers. To the search of your fathers. We're not talking about your father going to on uh, Jerry Springer and getting an identity test. We're not talking about that. <laughs> we're talking about your spiritual and your physical fathers. Who were you before you were brought here on slave ships? Who were you before you were in, in, in the midst of Africa? Who were you before that? Before you were black, African American? Who were you? That's why God says prepare yourself for the search. And now we're going to take you on a search. It's a very simple search for those that are sincere and want to receive the word of God. They go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. For those that are tuning in, if you want to know who you are according to the Bible, you go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and you read those curses all the way from 15 to 68. There are certain things that only happen to one group of people upon the face of the earth. And if you read those curses and you say, you know what, this happened to my forefathers. I'm still experiencing this today. Guess what? You are the children of Israel. And salvation is for you. Alright? Read that. 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe, to do all his commandments, and his statutes which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So curses were going to come upon the children of Israel and overtake them. So we're just going to go through a few of these curses. Let's go directly to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. We're going to hit the last curse. The biggest curse, the identifier of who we are. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Bible says he was going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. Now keep in mind, those that are biblical scholars, the children of Israel never went into Egypt again with ships. How? Because the landmass of Egypt and Israel were connected together. It, it was impossible to happen. All right. So what is he talking about? He's talking about a spiritual Egypt. He's talking about America. He's talking about the land that is known as Babylon the Great in the Bible. It is America. You're going to be brought into Egypt, meaning bondage. Your Egypt, for some of you, may have been Jamaica. It may have been Haiti, but you are going to be brought into bondage again with what? With ships. With what? With ships. With ships. When you read, everybody knows about the transatlantic slave trade. This is one of the biggest reasons why America and many other nations are rich, filthy rich to this day because of the transatlantic slave trade. We were taken in slave ships and placed all over the world. That's why you will see a black individual everywhere. Brazil is dominated with our people. Mm -hmm. Jamaica, Trinidad, so on and so forth. All these different land masses were brought there on slave ships. Read. By the way whereof I speak unto thee. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. Uh huh. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Read. For bondmen. For what? For bondmen. Read. And bondwomen. We were going to be sold for bondman and bondwoman. That happened. Read. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. What does that mean? No man was going to redeem you. So anybody that wants to vote for change, 
You want to vote out of your ghettos. You want to vote out of your slums. You want to vote out of STDs. You want to vote out of black on black crime. It is not going to happen. The only man that is going to save us out of this situation is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Understand that. All right? You cannot vote for change. Your change will come when your actions change. And your action is not taking vote. It's not about voting or dying. That's not going to change anything. You've been voting since the 60s and nothing has changed. Right. Our conditions have only worsened and worsened. Why? Because our actions have went oh, further and further and further away from the Bible. And now we're coming back to that. All right? So that's one big curse. So I hope that you, you see the people in the Bible are black. That the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are indeed the children of Israel. So, let's say you do agree with that. Now, we want to make sure you understand that you're not in a Christian mindset. And that you understand that Jesus Christ came for one nation of people. And we're going to prove it with the Bible. Right, all praises. That's exactly what we're going to do. Jesus, Jesus Christ, and not only him. When you read the Bible in a nutshell, the Bible, we're talking about from Genesis to Revelations. The Bible was only written for the Israelites. It was written by the Israelites and it's only to the Israelites. Okay? Now we know we got all races of people on the planet of the earth. Yeah, that's mel and void because when you read in the scriptures, it speaks about the history of the Israelites. There's an order upon the planet earth that God is going to get everybody in whether you like it or not. And that's what we're trying to prepare our people for. There's an order in which, go to that real quick in uh, Matthews real quick. Let's see what Christ said. Matthews Chapter 15, verse 24. Let's get it right out of the Messiah's mouth on what he said about the children of Israel. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. Because when you read in the scriptures, salvation is only for the Jew. Right. Read. Come on. But he answered and said, I am not sent. Christ said himself, I, me, a black man, white, woolly, textured hair. All right. Uh, dark skin. He said, I am what? I am not sent. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ said it out of his own mouth. I am not sent only but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So who sent Christ? The Most High God sent his son down here to die for the sins of Israel. And what I just said, we're going to prove that in the scriptures. Acts chapter 5, read verse 29. What we're doing is we're, we're, we're basically, there's a big problem amongst the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American Indian, our communities, all right? We are labeled, we are, we are flooded with sin in our communities. And what we're trying to do as a people is have them and inspire them with the scriptures to have them realize who they are and how they should be conducting themselves here in America and through the four corners of the earth. We ought to be living a righteous life as Israelites in order to be saved or to receive salvation. Thus saith the Lord. Read that. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 29. So God sent Christ only but for the children of Israel. So now let's see what the purpose of God sending Christ was for. What was Christ's purpose? Read. Come on. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Right. We ought to obey God rather than man. And so you said something about Christians earlier, officer, right? That's what's wrong with the Christian. That's exactly what's wrong with the Christian. They don't want to believe on what did it say? Read it again. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, uh -huh. We ought to obey God rather than man. We have to realize and understand that we have not been taught the Bible correctly. And we do not as a people obey God rather than men. Because that's exactly what you see behind the pulpit. We believe the doctrine or the philosophy or the seminary or the ideology of another man. Your pastor. Label him. Label him. That's who it is. And it's no type of evil speaking towards them. It's just we have to understand that these churches are not fixing our communities. So we have to do exactly what's in the Bible in order to change our problems. All right. These churches got to come out of the pulpit and go on the streets as Christ commanded. Plain and simple. And that's what we do. That's what we be about. Read on. It says we ought to obey God rather than who? Rather than men. So we don't believe on men. We understand this Bible because God gave us the word. Read on. Verse 30. Uh -huh. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Now notice in the verbiage of the wording it says, this is, uh, who is speaking? Peter is speaking to the people. He says, the God of our fathers. That's possessive. That's not for everyone. The God of our fathers of who? Whose fathers? Not everybody because we're not all the same people. God didn't make one race of people and we all look alike. He didn't make that. 
Okay? God made different nations of people. Who was speaking right here was an Israelite man. The God of his descents, his fathers. The scripture said in Job chapter 8 verse 8 earlier. Mm. Search, um, uh, prepare thy search. Uh, do thy, what does it say? Prepare thyself for the search of Prepare the thyself to the search mm. of thy fathers. Right. Meaning the descent, you're the descent of the lineage of your father and your father before him. Read on, come on. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. The God, meaning our God, that raised up our fathers, raised up a black man, raised up Jesus Christ, another black man. Read on. Whom he slew and hang on a tree. And who put those, uh, Christ on the tree? We did. We did as a people. By the power of the Romans, but we did. We sacrificed our Lord and Savior on the cross. Read on. Come on. Him have God exalted. So Christ's purpose being sent to the children of Israel, him God exalted. This is his purpose. Read. Come on. With his right hand. Uh -huh. To be a prince. His purpose. One of the purposes of Christ being died and right, rose again and him being sent from God to the children of Israel was to be a prince. Who is a prince? A prince is a man of power, of leadership. A prince, after the king is gone, turns into becoming the king. That's why Christ is the Lord of Lord, the king of kings. The prince is the, that, that man who continues the government of the king. The government and what we're speaking of is the government of righteousness. True peace on earth is God's commandments on the planet. Read on, come on. To be a prince uh -huh. and a savior. Right. For to give repentance. Christ is a prince and a savior for to give repentance, meaning a pardon back to God. Repentance, read on. To Israel. Repentance to who? To Israel. Because only Israel, it, there's no people upon the planet of the earth that's oppressed, demonized, that's been murdered, raped, and robbed as much as, who? read that. To Israel. As the Israelites are. We have been oppressed, raped, robbed, and murdered for over 400 years. For well over 400 years. Because it's, it, slavery started um, as for all the 12 tribes of Israel. Because when we say 12 tribes, that's you so-called blacks and Hispanics and native Indians. Okay? And 1492 was the start of the northern kingdom of who we call Israel. Northern kingdom of Israel make up those 10 tribes that was prophesied of in the scriptures. That were brought... That were uh, that traveled from the western hemisphere and came to the I'm sorry that traveled from the eastern hemisphere and came to the western hemisphere what we know of America's because what we have is Thanksgiving about to come up right mm -hmm. Thanksgiving y'all y'all celebrate um, the white man's Thanksgiving right. how can Christopher Columbus discover a land that was already inhabited by people mm. no and how did those people get over here. The Bible, the scriptures explain that. Just briefly, we're going to get it to real quick. Uh, second Ezra's real quick. Chapter 13, verse 40. This is going to be a Bible description of how those Boricua Taino Indians, all those in the Caribbean islands, how they got over here in the Americas, North Central South. That real quick. Go ahead. Uh, before you read that, I just want to say something. You did something very heavy, Captain. Mm -hmm. Before you, you sit down and celebrate Thanksgiving, just think about this. On that same day, it is a day of it's a day of remembrance for the so-called natives, and everybody knows about it. So, in what scripture, just like Christmas, mm. what scripture commands you to keep Thanksgiving as a holy day? Right. If we are Christians, mm. we must do what Christ did. Right. When did Jesus Christ command us to have Thanksgiving? Just think about that. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we still waiting for the answer. <laughs> Give us the scripture that says not only Thanksgiving, when did they say December the 25th is his birth? Right. When did they say, when did God ever command and say January the 1st, 2019, that's the new year. Right. Where, right. where, where? Prove it. Let's read this real quick. Come on, just briefly. The history of how those Indians got over here. Read, come on. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13 and verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners. So for you all that's listening right here on um, uh, the CRRnetwork.com, um, um, Urban Talk Radio, uh, WNTF. What we're reading out of right now, we're reading out of the Apocrypha, okay? These are sections out of the Bible that the Protestant Christians took out of our history, okay? We're reading those other parts of our scriptures, those other books. Read on, come on. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. So in the time of Hosea the king, a king of Israel, the northern kingdom, this was those ten tribes of Israel. You had a tribe called like Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Nathali, Asher, 
uh, Zebulon, Issachar, etc. Read on, come on. Who Salmanessa, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And those tribes in particular, they make up those Boricua Taino Indians, the, uh, the uh, Spanish-speaking tribes is what we like to refer it to as, all right? Those native, those, Sem those Seminole and native Indians, okay? Those Aztecs, the Mayans, or the Incas, okay? Read on, come on. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they to another land. The other land that they came over, these ten tribes they came over, was the Americas, okay? Because in the Bible, this land was never called America. In the Bible, this land is called Ashtaroth. And we're going to read it. Come on, read, read it a little faster. Come on. But they took, the, but they took this counsel among themselves. Uh-huh. That they will leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country. So they said I they're going to leave as a nation. They were going to leave as a multitude. They were going to leave the western hemisphere and come over the eastern hemisphere and come over to the western hemisphere. Read. And go forth into a further country where never mankind might, where never mankind dwelt. Mm -hmm. That they might keep their statutes that they never kept in their own land. So they came over here where never mankind ever dealt before. Read on, come on. And they entered into the Euphrates right. by the narrow passage of the river. Skip down where it says this land is called Astaroth. Verse 45. Right. For through that country, there was a great way to go. How long did it take them to get over here? Read on. Namely, a year and a half. It took the northern kingdom of Israel, the ten tribes of Israel, the Boricua Taino Indians, the, the so-called Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, uh, Salvadorians, Chilean, Argentina. Uh, who else you got? Uh, shoot. Um, uh, uh, Cubans, uh, Dominicans. It took them how long? Read on. Namely, a year and a half. It took them a year to get over here from the eastern hemisphere to the western hemisphere. Read. And the same region is called Astaroth. The landmass where we read, where we're at right now, is called Astaroth, according to the Bible. So we're going to go back real quick to get back on topic. Who is salvation for? Let's read it out of the Bible. We got examples of who Christ was sent to, the Israelites. Real quick, give me John in the New Testament. In the New Testament, chapter 4, verse 22. Not because, the New Testament. Yes, the New Testament. Because they say that it, that's, not, that's not my Jesus. Right. That's not my Lord. He wouldn't say that. He would, what about everybody? Whoa, hoo, hoo, hoo. Well, little do you know, if you actually read the Bible, brother, if you actually read the Bible, sister, this Bible is very narrow. Read that. Come on. The book of John, chapter 4 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. You worship, ye know not what. Because you don't know you worshiping Satan when you have your kids around here trick-or-treating. Plain and simple. When you got them around here talking about trick or treat, give me something good to eat, and they give your child razors in the uh, chocolate bar, and you wondering why? Listen, that's not your custom. Where is Halloween in the Bible? And now the church is integrated to get the kids to come in. You don't, no, that's evil. Anyway, it says, you worship what you know not what in these pagan custom holidays. And if you're doing that, it's high time for you to learn your true heritage. God gave you commandment of days. He gave you days that you keep and you honor him in. Okay, he gave you the Passover. He gave you the Feast of Dedication. He gave you the Feast of uh, Tabernacles. He gave you the Feast of Pentecost. He gave you the seven-day Sabbath. All right? He gave you when it starts even uh, uh, from evening to the morning. From evening to the morning. That's when a new day is. Alright? Come on, read on. Ye worship, ye know not what. Right. We know what we worship. But we up here, the Jews, we know what we worship because God wrote about it. So we're going to be obedient to God's commandments. Read on. For salvation is of the Jews. Because who you worship dictates your salvation when you die. Our salvation is in our Lord and our Savior. His words, he told us to keep the commandments. The Bible said, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Read. Come on. But the hour cometh, and now is. Read, come on. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And you're listening to that now, that time that is. This is the real time when you're going to hear the word of the true worshipers of Christ. Because we're going to be giving you the truth according to the Bible. Go ahead. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, feel free to call. We would love to hear from you. Right. So call in. If you hear the number, call in. Hey, we don't just preach the word, we teach it. We don't run from the scriptures, we expound on them. Right. We will explain every word in this book. Why? Because it's our identity, it's our history. All right, we are the Israelites. Here we go. Give me uh, Isaiah chapter 49, 45, verse 17 real quick. Once again, who is salvation for? Only the Jew. Only the Israelites. You don't, that's the problem. We don't, we, don't, we don't remember of us being called that. But the Jews are black, okay? There's no such thing as a Jewish person. 
or those that dwell in Israel right now. We were scattered and we was persecuted and we was driven out of the land of Israel, which is a part of Africa. We was driven out of Israel and we fled into the lands of Africa and the various parts of the world. Read on, come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. Read. But Israel. But who? But Israel. That's all you hear about is the people, the sons and daughters of God, the Israelites from Genesis to Revelations. But who? But Israel uh -huh. shall be saved in the Lord. We're going to be saved who? In our Lord. Why? Because we're going to be doing, we're going to keep the commandments of our Lord and Savior. We're going to do exactly what he told us to do. Thus, we're going to be rewarded and inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's going to be our salvation. Because so-called black man, black woman, you're not in the land of your salvation. You're in the land of your punishment. For lack of better words, you in hell. We are in hell as a people. We catching it every day. If you don't work that hard, rigorous, Nine to five, you either in jail, locked up, or worse, buried, six feet under. We are in hell as a nation. We are the walking dead in whom we have to raise back up and, and, um, and come back alive again by keeping God's commandments. Read on, come on. With an everlasting salvation. With an everlasting salvation. Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation, a long-lasting, never-ending salvation. salvation. Read on. Ye shall not be ashamed. We're not going to be ashamed no more. Why? Because we don't have the name of being called Negro anymore. We don't have the name of being called colored or ethnic or, or, or African American anymore. That is, those are names given unto us in the time of our shame and slavery. We shall not be ashamed. What? Nor confounded. The word confounded means confusion of faces. As we explained earlier, we're not going to be confounded. Because as long as you consider yourself an African American, you're going to act like an African American, thinking that Jesus Christ was born on December the 25th. Thinking that you're supposed to be running around with your kids, finding Easter eggs in the forest with your kids. What? The, the, the bunny don't even lay the egg to show you how much of an idolatry that is. Read on, come on. You should not be ashamed nor confounded. Uh huh. World. Israel is what? World. Israel is what? World. Israel is the world that was spoken of in John chapter 3, verse 16. Okay? For God so loved the world of Israel. It never changed or was never uh, converted or twisted when Christ spoke about it. Read on. World without end. It's a world without end. Come on, let's get Jeremiah chapter 23 real quick. Salvation is only for the Israelites. Now, what are all the other people upon the planet Earth? They, what are they following? When you're up, when you're reading the scriptures, for an example, John chapter 15, verse 24. Don't go to it. I'm just going to briefly explain. The woman, she, she knew her place with Christ. This was the situation. Christ said, it is not meat to give the children's bread, the children of Israel's bread, to dogs. The woman said she, this was a Syrophoenician woman, a Caucasian at that time. Who was, she was a Greek, okay? She said, yea, Lord, but the dogs eat of the crumbs of the master's table. She knew her place with where she fell at on the world to come in the kingdom of heaven. She knew that the nation of her people would, are dogs compared to the nation of Israel. So that should inspire the so-called black man and black woman. When you look at these nations, you're greater than they are. Thus saith the Bible. And that's just the program of God in the life that we live. But we have been bred up into captivity and we think that we're less than nothing. Why are we at the bottom? Why can't we be at the top? Why can't we run the governments? And just to tell you, Obama is not, the, uh, is not your, uh, your king or your savior. He's not your savior. Because what has changed since he was in office? Hell, the president that is over us right now, is more things have happened better for black folks with him than, than it was when a black man was in office. You got to understand the land that you live in, it's puppetry. When dealing in politics, politics, government, that's not of our customs, our ways. We are not to trust in democracy, all right? For lack of better word. Come on, go read on where you at. Get back to the scriptures. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 6. Right, right. In his days... Judah shall be saved. In his days, Judah shall be saved. In Israel's days, that's the his, all right? Judah shall be saved, and who else? And Israel shall dwell safely. And we're going to dwell how? Safely. We ain't been dwelling safety as a people. I'm going to show you how we have not dwelt safely. Give me Zechariah. This is a crystal cut scripture right here. What we're doing is you have to take the scriptures and compare in the modern days that we live in who they fit. And you find out that the prophecies... Are, are the history that we went through as a people or the perpetual the perpetual generational curses that we're still going through as a nation of people. Give me that real quick. Read that real quick. This is what's going on.
to the Jews, the Israelites, the true people of God. Read, come on. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11 and verse 5. Yes, yes, thank you. Whose possessors slay them. Who are we possessed by? As long as you, listen, ask yourselves right now. What is your last name? <laughs> and say it to yourself in your head or out loud. What is your last name? And where did that name come from? When you go into that history of that name, you're going to find out that it came from a so-called white man. We say so-called because the man is not white. He ain't pure. He's red. He is red. That's his true. His name is nationality. He's an Edomite. Esau is his father. Okay? Now, you get that from back in the time sharecropping. When the slaves was left free, they had that name. You were Master Reynolds. You was Master Jenkins. Mine used to be Green. You was Master Green's property. Master Morris's, Jenkins, Johnson, Jackson, whoever, Brown, White, all these names that we, these surnames, they come from Caucasian men. Ask yourselves, you didn't come over here with those names from Africa. You came with those original names when you was coming over in the, uh, from the transatlantic slave trade. And not only that, the sub-Saharan slave trade. All right, we were scattered throughout various parts from Africa. All right, read on where you at, come on. Whose possessors slay them. We are possessed by those that built and run the government today okay we are possessed by them how because you're still calling yourselves outside of what god deemed you to be the israelites you still call yourselves african americans puerto ricans Puerto Rico. what a rich port you're not a rich port you are a people how can a people be a statement a rich port what is it uh dominicans okay you so-called dominicans you're not a uh, a dog a loyal dog that's what dominican means Domesticated, Cuba, all these false names that we've been given. Caribbean, Carib, Indian, Carib, Indians, the Caribs. But that's not the race or the descent of a people. Read on, come on, read. Whose possessors slay them. Your possessors slay means kill you in the land of your captivity. Read on. And hold themselves not guilty. And they get off scot-free. Scot-free. Because you'll find out in these... Jo look, you looking on the news right now. Listen. A man, uh, uh, a woman would literally break into a so-called black man's house, kill them, thinking that it's his house, her house, when she knew it wasn't her house, and then she gets off free. No judgment or nothing like that. A brother would get life in prison for the smallest crime. Meanwhile, the other one that committed the crime or doing the crime, they get off scot-free. Injustice is what it's speaking of. It says, your, your possessors, your slave masters, they kill you and hold themselves not guilty. Come on. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord. And they that sell the Israelites, they say to themselves, read, Blessed be the Lord. They say, God bless America because these Negroes helped us get rich off free labor. Read the whole verse from the top again. Read that. Come on. Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. Who possessors slay them. It says, whose possessors slay them. And what else? And hold themselves not guilty. And hold themselves not guilty. They get off scot-free. Read on. And they that sell these say. And they that sell the Israelites, they say to themselves inwardly, their mentality is this. Read. Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. On the back of the dollar bill, it says, God bless America and God we trust. How did they get that dollar, those riches, those values, those treasures, that gold? from robbing the Israelites, either of their death or of their hard free labor. Read on, come on. And their own shepherds pity them. And their own politicians, their own people, the Al Sharptons, the, 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 the Jesse Jacksons, the whoever, uh, wh whoever represents us as a people, Okay, to this government. Read on. What do they say? Read on. They what? And their own shepherds pity them not. They don't see the affairs or the afflictions of the people. They don't heal the people. They keep us in that docile state of mind and democracy and religion all right not knowing who we are as a people all right go back to that real quick jeremiah chapter 23 verse 6 this bible fits you so-called black man hispanic man native american man native american woman hispanic woman black woman so-called this bible is your history it's your identity it fits you to the t read that the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 6. Salvation, read. In his days, Judas shall be saved. Why shall we be saved? Because we're being afflicted. All right? We're being, our lives are being held on a thin, a thin piece of ice. Death is right around the corner for a lot of us. Read on, come on. And Israel shall dwell safely. And Israel shall dwell. So we need to live, we need to be in the place of dwelling safe, safely from what? Enemies, our enemies. Read, come on. And this is his name whereby... He shall be called the Lord over righteous. Read that verse one more time, please. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 6. In his days, 
Judah shall be saved, right? And Israel shall dwell safely. Mm -hmm. And this is his name whereby he shall be called. This is the Lord's name whereby he shall be called. What shall his name be? Read on. The Lord over righteousness. The, the Lord what? The Lord over righteousness. The Lord our righteousness. The Lord God is our righteousness. Read that. Let me get uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25 real quick. It says this is going to be when Israel is saved. This is what we're going to call the Lord. It says, the Lord, our righteousness. So the kingdom of heaven, our salvation, shall be established with righteousness. Now we're going to give you the clear definition of what righteousness is according to the Bible. That's right. Read that. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 25. It shall be our righteousness. To what? If we observe to do all these commandments. The definition of God's righteousness is his commandments. If you keep God's commandments like the Sabbath day. You don't buy, sell, uh, cook, or work on the Sabbath day. You keep it holy. You keep God's commandments. Okay? If a man, you're not supposed to be in a dress, brother. You're supposed to be wearing pants. Sister, you're not supposed to be in a pants. You're supposed to be wearing dresses. God gave a dress code, a dietary law. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7, or verse 1 on down, the whole chapter explains the dietary law in which the children of Israel, God's heritage, his royalty, the foods we should and should not be eaten on the planet Earth. Go back to that in Jeremiah, please. No, no, that's it. That's it on that. Let's get more concerning salvation, salvation, salvation. Let's get a definition of the kingdom of heaven. Let's get it. In the kingdom of heaven, is it them pearly gates that we all pray that we're going to go to? Is it, a, is it a gate where everybody just walk in together, hand holding hand? Uh, what was that? Martin Luther King, he said, I uh, had a dream that... Uh, what is, little white boys. Little, little white boys. Boy. Yeah, go ahead. Say it real quick. I, I forgot. <laughs> little white boys and little black girls and all these would hold hands together. Uh-huh. Yeah. They hold hands together. Okay. We'll hold hands together in America. That dream was not a dream, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Because from that time, what he said was, it, it, came, to, it came to pass, but still, we catching hell. Let's see what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like, though. Read that, come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, and verse 12. Those pearly gates that we all know about. Come on, read. It had a wall, great and high. In the kingdom of heaven, there's a wall, great and high, an untouchable wall. Read on. And had 12 gates. And had 12 gates. Read on. No, the wall, the purpose of the wall is to keep something out that don't belong in. God ain't confusing why he wrote it like this. Keep out who? All those that don't belong in it, meaning the other nations. That's why it says who the gates are for. Read on. Come on. And at the gates, 12 angels. There was 12 angels at the gates to guard the gates of it. Read. And names written thereon. And there were names written on. The name means something of ownership. Correct? My name is this. That's who I am. And that, that they like to have an old saying. My name was written on that. That's mine. Read on. Come on. Which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel? The names of the gates, of the children of Israel, but were written on the gates. Okay. The names that was written on the gates belong to who? The what? The names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. They had the names of the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. Salvation, those gates, those pearly gates is only for the Israelites. Only the tribe of Judah is going to get through the gate of Judah. You so-called Negroes. Only the tribe of uh, Ephraim is going to get through the tribe of Ephraim. You so-called Puerto Ricans. Okay? Only the tribe of uh, Zebulon, you so-called Peruvians and um, Belizeans, okay? You're going to get through that tribe, that, that gate, because that's your tribe, okay? That's your gate that you go through in the kingdom of heaven, all right? I want to say shalom. Thank you for all having us out here real quick. We pray that you are edified in the word of God. Listen, you can all reach us real quick. Uh, we're in uh, Orlando, Florida area. We're at uh, 5380 Silver Star Road, okay? 32803, uh, okay? 32803. And uh, go ahead. You can also visit us. If you have a question, you can visit us. We are worldwide. We have over 66 locations throughout the whole world. You can find us at IsraelUnite.org. And I want you to do yourself a favor. Ask your pastor or your preacher, ask them, who are you according to the Bible? And ask it and see if he gives you a biblical answer. If he does not, you know where to find us. IsraelUnite.org. Oh, praises.
hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew it sound odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more it sounds hard man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.